Here's another example of the use of our axial loading equations to uh, solve a statically indeterminate structure. Uh, review from last time, um, we know that uh, to be able to solve a, uh, uh, a structure using only uh, equilibrium, that we have to have uh, the same number of reaction forces as we have equilibrium equations. And when we have more unknown reaction forces, then that becomes a statically indeterminate problem. And to be able to solve it, we have to involve the displacements. The compatibility equations are set up to uh, ensure that the displacements are compatible with the problem geometry. So here's our example problem. We've got uh, three identical wires, so wires are all made out of the same material, have the same length, same cross-sectional area and they're supporting a rigid beam subjected to this thousand pound force. Now we know if we only had two cables here then we would have a statically determinate problem and we could solve for the uh, tensions in the cable using just equilibrium. But once we added the third cable it becomes statically indeterminate. Well let's do the equilibrium equations first. Draw a free body diagram uh, showing our three unknown tensile forces. And let's take the sum of the moments, about any point, we'll take it about point A, and get an equation here. Uh, normally I would convert those uh, uh, lengths into inches, but in this case the uh, units will, will cancel out anyway, and we'll end up with this equation, 4 times the tension in B plus 10 times the tension in C is equal to 2,000 pounds. We'll call that equation 1. We get a second equation from taking the sum of the forces in the y direction. Of course, we have the three tensile forces upward, the thousand pound down, and so this comes up for equation two. And that's all we're going to get out of equilibrium. The sum of the forces in the x direction would give us a, a trivial equation because there is no um, force in the x direction. So we only get two equations to solve for our three unknowns. So what we need uh, is a compatibility equation. So let's think about how that, uh, how the uh, beam will uh, deform. Well, the beam actually is rigid, so its deformation is going to, it's going to remain rigid as the three wires stretch. And so from that we can relate these, um, the amounts that the wires stretch, delta A, delta B, and delta C. Let's, uh, let's draw a couple of triangles here. And so the uh, triangle on the right would have a base of 6 feet and, and a height of delta B minus delta C. And the large triangle would have a uh, base of 10 feet and a height of delta A minus delta C. And so uh, just making those similar triangles, we can look at the ratio of the, uh, the height to the base for both of those. And do a little algebra on that. And come up with this equation which involves not the tension forces yet but the uh, uh, the deformation or the amount that each wire uh, stretches. Now of course the amount that each wire stretches is related directly to the tension force in the wire. Uh, delta is equal to PL over AE. So in this case the P is just the tension for each wire and so again the length, area, and uh, modulus of elasticity are the same for A, B, and C, and so we can cancel out L over A, E in uh, each of these terms and be left with this equation we'll call equation 3 that once again relates the three tension forces. So with this one compatibility equation and our two equilibrium equations we now have three equations to solve for the three unknowns. We could use substitution to do that I'm just going to set them up uh, in matrix form and um, take the 3x3 the, uh, three three coefficient matrix, invert that, multiply by the um, force matrix, the 2000, 1000, 0, and the um, uh, product of those two matrices then will be the, uh, the unknown tension forces. In this case, 579, 368, and 53 pounds for A, B, and C. And so the solution seems to make sense in that because of where the thousand pounds uh, is applied, you'd expect that uh, the end A would, uh, would deform more than the end at C, so the wire uh, A is being stretched the most, and since it has the same properties as the other wire, would uh, pick up the most of the uh, thousand pound force. 
All right, let's look at a couple of variations of that problem. Let's uh, kind of uh, do, do a general um, solution here where we're going to do it symbolically for the distances A, B, and C as shown. And we'll allow the wires to have different properties as well, different lengths, different cross-sectional areas, different modulus of elasticity. And so going back to our free body diagram, uh, we take the sum of the moments about A as we did before. So the only difference in our uh, equation one will be that we're uh, uh, putting the symbols in rather than the actual numbers. And again, taking the sum of the forces in the y direction, all the tensions have to add up to the applied force F. That'll be equation two. Our compatibility equation uh, will still set up those similar triangles as we did before. But uh, again, now instead of uh, numbers for the uh, base, we have the uh, symbols B and C. So doing a little bit of algebra on those, we come up with again an equation that involves not the tensions yet, but the uh, uh, deflections of each of the wires. And so in this case, each cable can have a uh, different uh, uh, length, a different uh, area, and a different modulus of elasticity. So let's write the uh, delta, the change in length of each cable, PL over AE, is simply be, being equal to P over K. So in this case, K is just like a, um, a spring stiffness of a linear spring. And in fact, uh, the cable, when it's subjected to the load, does act like maybe a very stiff, but a, but a stiff linear spring. That is, the amount that it deflects is linear proportion, linearly proportioned to the amount of force that we put on it. So the uh, spring constant K would simply be equal to AE over L of each of these uh, each of these wires or cables. And so we can um, then write the compatibility equation in terms of, again, the lengths uh, B and C, and now the uh, uh, spring constant or the stiffness values of each of the wires, Ka, Kb, and Kc, and that becomes our third equation. And so in matrix form, here's what we have now with the uh, coefficient matrix being in terms of the, the lengths B and C, and um, the uh, stiffnesses Ka, Kb, and Kc. So we're going to uh, set this up into a spreadsheet. You can see up at the uh, top we have the uh, parameters of each one of the wires, and then the um, spring stiffness calculated for each one of those wires. Uh, put in the distances A, B, and C, and the force. So the uh, baseline case that we just looked at, there's our solution. So here's a variation of the problem, a pretty simple one. We're going to keep the uh, wires all constant for this one. Uh, we're going to make it symmetric. So uh, the 10-foot beam has the 1,000-pound force applied right in the center. So let me show you our spreadsheet. And so again, here's the parameters of the wire. We'll leave those the way they are. And A, B, and C now are all at 60 uh, inches or 5 feet. And you can see there's the result, 333 pounds for each of the tensions. And that's not too surprising um, since, again, the problem is symmetric. The uh, beam will pull it, be pulled straight down, and so A, B, and C will all be stretched the same amount. And since the uh, uh, wire properties are the same, they're all going to have the uh, share the load equally. So, what if we made wire uh, B a little bit shorter, make it uh, half the length that it was before, while keeping A and C both at 90 inches? Well, what's that going to do to the uh, distribution of the load? Well, if you think about the stiffness of the wire, we said was AE over L. So if we cut the length in half, we've actually doubled the stiffness of that wire. So we would expect that uh, wire B would uh, take more of the load than uh, A and C. In fact, it, uh, it should take double the amount of load of either A or C. Let's go back and show that on the spreadsheet. And again, the only thing I'm changing here is the length of wire B. 45 inches, and you can see that uh, our answers here are as we expected. Since each wire is still going to be stretched the same amount, but the force required to stretch B is going to be twice that 
uh, the force that's required to stretch A or C in equal amounts. So there's our distribution of loads. If we change A and C to aluminum uh, wires and leave B it's the same as steel, then um, we've cut the stiffness of A and C by a factor of 3, again AE over L, and so uh, they're going to end up taking even less uh, force now and so uh, again you can see more uh, force applied or taken up by uh, B which is uh, again stiffer than the other two wires because of two things both of the uh, change in length and the uh, change in modulus. Finally let's look at one more um, back to the baseline case where all the wires were identical but what if we move the 1000 pound force a little bit closer to A. Well when you put this in the spreadsheet Here's what we come up with, but you notice that um, wire C is shown uh, with a negative force. It's in compression. Now that would be allowed if these were, uh, uh, say, thin rods, but because we call them wires or cables, we know that uh, uh, the cable cannot uh, resist a compression load, and so this result really would be invalid. What's really happening here is that wire C will go slack, so you can just take it out of the problem altogether and uh, find the uh, forces in A and B as if it were a statically determinate problem. And what you'll find, of course, is because of the ratio of where the, that load's applied, that A will take 800 pounds and B will take uh, 200 pounds.